Hello everybody, it's Carla Nicole, and welcome to the Forgiveness Series. Um, today we're going to talk about um, absent father, absent mother, absent parents, not in our life, and um, how can um, a child of the situation, how can they um, be able to forgive their parent that that was not there and so I wanted to um, give people a different perspective because I think a lot of times when we're hurt because a parent isn't there or because a parent is you know um, not in your life the way you believe they should be in your life it makes it very difficult as as a child without a, a parent present in your life how is one supposed to um, have a have a life of peace I mean we really have to think about that we really have to sit down and come up with a plan to resolve this because a lot of parents um, that had children some of them uh, may have had children by surprise <laughs> some of them may have had unplanned pregnancies and things of that nature but at the end of the day when we have you know um, a parent that that isn't there it's very very difficult um, to try to uh, answer the questions as to why they weren't present and so there's a lot of hurt underlying hurt that's going on so it makes it difficult for us to um, forgive it if you will so um, I want to welcome everybody it's Carla Nicole very first time if you've ever been to my show I do this show every Sunday at 12 noon and um, I'm a single mother of two. I have a, a beautiful daughter that will be 19 um, next month. And my son, back, my handsome son back there, he is 10. He just turned 10 last month. So, um, as you know, having, well, I'm sorry, this month, be the center of your is very exciting. So, um, I just wanted to let you guys know that it's, it's a beautiful thing. Hey, Dwayne, so glad you're here. Um, Alta V's Cuffed, so glad to see you. Hey, Redman, Saji, hey, James, so glad you guys are here. So I wanted to welcome everybody. Um, like I said, this is a part of the Forgiveness Series. And just to give you a, a, just an idea of what the Forgiveness Series is about and what my angle is for doing this actual series is to explain to people that when you um, are practicing forgiveness, you are releasing them from uh, the chains of offense. So when someone has offended you or made you upset or did something that you felt was unacceptable, um, then this this is what forgiveness is about. We're, we're, we're supposed to be healing people and we're going to, uh, we're supposed to be healing people and we're, we're supposed to be making sure that um, people are uh, actually getting away from, uh, you know, getting so upset with the fact that they're upset and, and, and frustrated. And practicing forgiveness is not hard to do. It just is a practice you must do on a daily basis. You don't want to do it once in a while. You want to practice forgiveness every day. So I want to talk about um, the fact that parents that... Um, have children that um, they just were not invested with the child um, and then the child becomes an adult uh, or you know the child uh, sees you on occasion and you know you really don't have a real interaction with them so you're trying to figure out well how can I really forgive this because you weren't there and uh, a lot of times the children of the parent that wasn't there it is very, very frustrated because they're like, well, you know, um, their answers or the lack of answers that they're receiving from the from the absent parent makes it very difficult for the child to try to even wrap their mind around having some type of having some type of um, normalcy or peace in their life. So. I want to talk about that for just a second. So, you know, when a child grows up without having the parent there, or the parent, they know the parent 
you know, based upon some sometimes the, the child knows who the parent is, sometimes they don't. But when they know who the parent is and they just don't have an interaction with them, it makes it kind of difficult also because it's like, well, I know this person is my parent, but they're not here. Or they, they're doing other things. I see them doing other, uh, other um, activities except parenting me. So there could be a, a whole life of, resent, of resentment, a whole life of anger, a whole life of bitterness because you're like, you know, you weren't, you weren't there. You didn't do what you were supposed to do for me in my life. So, you know, um, I, I have an issue with that. And so a lot of times, you know, it, it's difficult as the absent parent may have a good reason why they are not parenting you or not in a parental um, role in your life. But a lot of times we can't see that because as the child of the parent that's not there, we're, we're trying to figure out, well, you know, I have a lack here. And then, you know, if you didn't have the ideal life, quote unquote, or you had a, a family that you felt wasn't as um, engaging or um, wasn't as involved with your um, upbringing, a lot of times what happens is we're, we're frustrated because we're like, you know, if you would have stepped up and did what you were supposed to do, you know, I wouldn't have this black here. So I'm trying to give people um, a different perspective because I think sometimes when you're in a situation it's hard to really see or hard to really come up with resolution to being hurt. So first off, I want to talk about um, what you can do as far as the forgiveness piece. So the forgiveness piece, first of all, has to come from an inner um, dialogue with yourself. First of all, you need to conversate on what it is that you feel inside that you did not have because of that parent not being present in your life. And basically be very honest with what you feel your lack was because they weren't there. And then understand that although, you know, that parent wasn't there, it may not be because they were trying to um, have a great time or party or do something outside that what you're thinking it is. It could be that they just didn't have, they just were not equipped with parenting you to the best of their ability. So because of that, there, there has to be a means for you to really soak into your mind what is it that I need to do to um, get past the hurt. Because a lot of times when we, we get really um, intoxicated into um, unforgiveness, because that's what it is, we get really intoxicated with it and drunk over how upset we are and how things didn't go our way. When we get in that space, it's hard to see the other person's um, story or why they did what they did or didn't do. And we need to allow ourselves, because sometimes we may never even get the answer. We just may, ne we, we just may never get the answer. Um, one of the best people I think that took this this uh, negative situation, which she had, um, she was, she's the comedian. I'm trying to think of her name right now. What is her name? Um, anyway, she's a comedian and she's out here doing wonderful things. She, she was in foster care and her parents weren't around, but she ended up taking her sad story and her circumstance and turned it into a positive. So rather than telling yourself you had a huge lack or a huge um, disadvantage because your parent wasn't there. You really cannot say that because you don't know what it could have been had they been there. So I want to give people a different perspective to look at. I did do a poll earlier. I think it went fairly well. I have to go back and find out what the results were. But I did, did do a, um, a poll earlier asking if, if if you would forgive a parent that wasn't there. And I did have someone say that they would have, they had a hard time or would not forgive it. And I just want to give a different perspective on that. You don't want to live a life of, of unforgiveness or not practicing forgiveness. In other words, step outside of the situation if you can and 
change the fact that it's in your perspective okay so what that means is when you're hurt upset bitter angry or in that unforgiving space a lot of times we don't even we don't even see the other person's story because we only see our side but when you step out of it psychologically and you allow yourself well maybe there were some things I don't know maybe that person couldn't do it because of a lot of different re you know reasons for example um, I, I personally had that situ situation I was um, adopted personally and um, after I had did the research on what happened um, my birth mother just couldn't physically take care of me she had um, terrible um, situation with her health so she was unable to take care of me at the time when I had came along and so she ended up just uh, putting me up for adoption at the time and so um, after I read the story um, I, I was fine with it and I don't have any you know aggravated issues about it or anything like that I was just like well I just wanted to know what happened and, and then when I found out what was a, a health concern and stuff like that it's like okay I can I can respect that but not every time do we realize that sometimes it might not be a health concern it could be a drug addiction it could be um, alcoholism it could be a lot of different things I mean you know there's several different circumstances that could stop a parent or stop a person from parentally guiding you in your life and it doesn't necessarily mean that you had a great life or your life was supreme but um, I always say be because of the fact that they gave you life that in and of itself is a gift alone so when we when we step out of our anger and, and give it a chance to really step out of thinking that our life was a shambles because of their decision for not being involved um, we, we can definitely change the dialogue to ourselves, and then we can learn to heal it we can learn to fix it we can actually get past the hurt the sadness the bitterness because to be honest with you if you're carrying this weight of sadness or bitterness or upset it's very hard to navigate in life um, feeling like, you know, you matter, feeling like you can make a difference. So it's very important that we see past um, our hurt, our anger, and learn to step outside of the, um, the fact that they did not um, parentally guide you, they were not totally involved to the to the court that you felt that they should have been and you will see okay I, I had some benefits in your life and then here's the thing because of your ex experience um, it does not necessarily mean that you cannot be an extremely amazing parent that does not mean that so I want you also to step outside of believing that, well, I'm cursed now because I don't have a blueprint or I don't know how to parent my child because I didn't have an example. But innately, because of who you are, you can, you can design and be in control of what type of parent you are, whether you had a great, pristine example or not. There are some parents out here that are doing a phenomenal job parenting their children and didn't have the greatest example so don't believe for a second you cannot control your now do not believe you cannot not um, change how you were affected into a positive because you can so I, I'm big about always making sure that I give you guys a different perspective I want you guys to see past the fact that yes there was a hurt there but we also don't know that absent parents examples either and we all have choices in our life so let me give you this as an example when we are um, growing up with a great example or maybe not so great example 
we still have the final say as to what type of parent we will be. Period. We can either take the positive or we can take the negative and apply it in our life. We are not out of control when it comes to what type of parent we will become. So what that said is, when we're sitting back angered or hurt or disappointed in what our absent parent wasn't doing for us, it does not mean that you cannot change how your children are impacted by what type of parent you are. Because believe it or not, some of the best parents are those that didn't have the greatest example and they're, they are leading by a pristine example on their own because they decide in their soul, I'm going to be, I'm going to have certain standards with my children. Regardless of the fact that I didn't have the greatest example of my own. You know, um, perfect example, I know someone that's parent never hugged them never said they loved them, just never had that as an example. I mean, never knew how to show affection or how to um, show compassion. And that person, if actually is a man, this man is a pristine father to his children. And the powerful thing about it is he didn't have the greatest example, but he took it upon himself to be a dynamic parent based upon who he was to himself. See, I want to make sure that everyone understands something. We all matter and we all can make a difference. Just because of our unfortunate experiences or just because of what we've been through, it does not necessarily mean that in those experiences we can't learn something from them, number one. And number two, it doesn't mean that with those examples and experiences, we can't take from them differences of how to apply and do better ourselves. Good morning, Black. So glad to see you, sis. So when you have a parent or when you don't have a parent there, you can still be a beautiful parent. Matter of fact, if you really want to look within yourself and ask for God's guidance on what you want to be and become, you can do it. It's not hard. Matter of fact, it's probably going to be to your advantage anyway to have your own spiritual guidance and, and, and have somebody that you can have a, what I call it, accountability partner. Someone that's close to you that you can talk to and give you some kind of pointers that maybe is a parent themselves and has their own challenges and tells you, well, you know, I have done this, 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 and this even though I did not have the greatest example. And I'm telling you, we have so much power in how we, um, you know, what we have as an outcome in our life. A lot of times we'll sit back and think, eh, I am um, subjective to everything that happens in my life. That's not true. We have more control over what we have in our life than we care to admit. Because a lot of times we don't really want to sit back and look at it and say, hold on. If I make these decisions, then I can actually make some, some, some dynamic changes in someone else's life. I could be a better example. You know, some of these children that ha have been burdened with not having the parent there, they, they fill in their mind the blanks like, well... If my mom was here, she would have showed me how to do makeup. She could have took me to, to get my hair done. She could have showed me this. She could have showed me that. Or if my dad was there, he would have been playing ball with me. He could have been showing me how to drive a car, this and that. So we fill in blanks of what's not there. And we do so by saying, well, this is what it would have been had that parent been there. But that's not necessarily true. Because sometimes you can have a parent that's in the home and completely and totally not available or engaging with you at all, period. They're aloof. They're not, they're, they're, they're just, they're present, but they're really not engaged. So I wanted to talk about that as well, because I think sometimes we think absent parents mean that they're not in the home. Hell, sometimes they can be in the home and not engaged. They may not be parentally guiding you. They may not even really be interacting with you other than good morning, maybe. 
or good night. And it's like, okay, um, I don't really feel like this parent is really here, even though the parent is there physically. So I wanted to talk about that also. Be very careful assuming that those that had the parent not there, be very careful assuming that you think that, well, if that parent was there, I would have had an ideal life. Not necessarily. That's one of the things that I think um, some people tend to fantasize about, if you will. They fantasize about, yeah, you know, if my mom would have been here, I would have had this. Or my dad would have been here, I would have had that. You can't bank on that because you don't know. So rather than having that um, so-called thinking in your mind, allow yourself time to really sit back and say, I didn't have them here. So let me just own that. They just weren't here. Or even if they were present, but they weren't engaged or involved. Okay, they were present, they weren't engaged or involved. Just look at it from a realistic point of view and, I, and, and, and eyesight. And then, as, as you're looking at that, understand this. It's not your fault. Allow yourself to let this go. Because when you... When you let it go and you release them from the offense of not doing what you feel they should have done you actually break free not only from the hurt disappointment from them but you also allow them the freedom to go and 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 not have to be burdened with you feeling like they're shamed because no one wants to feel that on the planet they want to let it just let it go and then say listen what then start looking now here's here's the key now now that i gave you how to do it Here's the key. Now, what's very, very important is to now give yourself a whole different perspective on what you were looking at the whole time. Allow yourself now time to look at the positive and the negative of what you went through because they didn't do their part. And then what they didn't do, forgive it. But what you did benefit from take that as an example and and hold on to that and and really be mindful that it could have been worse that's what we don't look at a lot of times we always think well i had a miserable childhood i didn't have this person i didn't have that person and it's like well you know it could have been worse you know um i know of one person that was adopted and she was interracial and, and her parents were Caucasian and she struggled, struggled through, through I mean, through, for a long time that she didn't look like her family and she didn't feel like it was, it was, you know, she always had the saddened part to her because she felt like it wasn't enough. And it's like, listen, you had a beautiful family. Okay, I get that it was different, but it was still beautiful and it was your family. But, you know, she carried that burden for years, not allowing herself the enjoyment of having what she had because she was burdened about what she didn't have. So when you let go of being so saddened and, and, and depressed and burdened with what you don't have, you're not able to live a life of, of fulfillment because you're miserable, you're always upset, you're always sad, you're always miserable because, oh, I didn't have this, I didn't have that. But what did you have? You had the opportunity of a beautiful family. Some people didn't even have that. You didn't have to go without having a meal. You were taken care of. You had siblings that cared and loved you. This is the stuff that I'm talking about. Even though we had maybe not the so-called idealistic life, doesn't necessarily mean that our life wasn't enough. We need to start to be happy with what we were blessed with and excited about what life has given us and understand this that even though you had some challenges even if you had parents both engaged it, it you don't know if it would have been times when you were burdened tight times when you were saddened disappointed life is not always picture perfect because you have both parents or you had biological parents or whatever it doesn't necessarily mean everything's going to be hunky-dory because you have the so-called two parents in, in, in your life. That doesn't necessarily mean that. So we have to get past being burdened, harboring 
in unforgiveness, being intoxicated in unforgiveness because we're upset. We feel like we're, we didn't have enough. You need to get past that and you need to learn about what you do have. And then make a difference in someone else's life. Who can, whose life can you brighten because you're here? You know, we all have a purpose. So what can we do on this planet to make somebody's life lighter, more, more happier, happier? I mean, we can do so much, right? We can all make a difference. We can all, we can all definitely systematically change some people's disheartening just by being there, just by listening, just by telling them, hey, I care about you. I want to see the best for you. And that, that doesn't cost anything but a little energy and a little time to, to have compassion for them. All right? So, hey, look, it's already over. Look, I tell you, 30 minutes goes like this. But listen, I wanted to let you guys know tonight I will be having um, the resolve call with Ryan Smith. I cannot wait. We're going to help Ryan with a family secret. And it's great because what's beautiful about it is, you know, um, families go through challenges like I'm talking about here. And so how can we help Ryan to get his uh, blurry scenario with his family a lot clearer and in, in focus so if you want to be a part of the wisdom focus group call tonight it's called the resolve call please inbox me i will give you the details on how to get there um and it'll be taking place at eight o'clock this evening um you guys are all welcome i would love to have you um because you know at this point if we can help someone else then we're doing something, right? We can all be teachers and we can all be students of life. And that's one of the beautiful things about the Wisdom Focus Group is you can be that just by being a part of the group and, and encouraging others. So I hope you guys can come. Um, listen, share this video. There's so many people that are going through hurt because of not having a parent present. And I'm telling you, um, the sadness and, and, the, and the frustration it, it, it can really cause you all kinds of hurt and all kinds of uh, health issues and everything else. Just depression. I mean, it, it, it can cause so many things. So please be sure to share this. And um, I hope every th everyone has a wonderful Sunday. And like I said, if you want to be a part of the Wisdom Resolve call, please let me know. Inbox.